Let's take a look at the metering section on the right. Now to start with, we have peak metering that's displayed in white and RMS metering, which is more of an average reading of the levels displayed in a gray. And as the audio plays, you'll see the two different colors at work. Right away, right away, right away, I'm defending you. So there's the white and there's the gray and the momentary values held there and there are the readouts. Now we can adjust the input level with this slider and the output level with this slider. But when we're adjusting the input, we want to make sure that we have an optimal level set up that's hitting the sweet spot for all these modules to work in their optimal ranges. So there's a new function in Nectar 3 called Auto Level Mode. We turn it on with this button. And now you're going to see this little slider over here, which gives us the target area that we want to aim for. So what Auto Level Mode will do is it'll dynamically adjust the input gain for us as it's listening to the music within a range of 3 dB and it adjusts it to hit the target level that we set there. And we can use the vocal assistant to determine the target level for us, but we can also adjust it manually by dragging this. And then in ALM mode, it'll constantly stay within a 3 dB range. So we set the basic level here so that it's hitting the target and then it'll adapt and stay within that range. Right away, right away, right away, I'm defending you. And you're depending on my will to slowly break and crack. So it's doing the hard work for me of keeping it within the target that I want so we don't have to make micro adjustments with automation on the track in the DAW first in order to make sure we're having a consistent level come in. So really nice feature. So just to summarize, we turn it on and off there. We set the target level that we want, either manually or vocal assistant will adjust it for us. We set the actual level coming in so that it's in that sweet spot, and then it'll automatically be maintained there throughout the vocal within plus or minus 3 dB. Now, we have a limiter at the end that can be turned on and off with that, and it's a brick wall zero latency limiter on the output. And we use this to adjust the ceiling level, which we don't want the output to exceed. And we set this here, and then we can actually set the amount of output gain we want. And when it's exceeding this, we're going to see gain reduction happening, which is containing the signal below the ceiling. So let me adjust this and show you. Right away, right away, right away, I'm defending you. So we see the colored area there showing the amount of gain reduction that's happening. And you can see help tags as I move over all the controls. And I think I'm going to turn those off so that they don't get in the way throughout the videos. I'm going to turn off show tool tips. Now we have a really great bypass and match function here. So bypass, as you'd expect, it acts as a global bypass. Right away, right away, right away, I'm defending you. And you're depending on my will to slowly break. So it bypasses all the modules at once. Now you'll notice that there's a level change because these Processes are adding volume. For example, there's makeup gain here in the compression. And we have this nice match function to compensate for these volume changes. So the idea is that when we bypass, instead of hearing a difference in volume, we can use the match function. And when this is active, it means that the level of the bypassed signal is going to be the same level as the processed signal when bypass is not active. So this means it'll allow us to bypass the effects of the modules and judge more accurately without being distracted by the differences in level. So with match on, let's now bypass and enable the processes and hear the difference. Right away, right away, right away, I'm defending you. And you're depending on my will to slowly break and crack. So we have the same level when they're processed and when they're bypassed, which is great for helping us make more accurate, unbiased processing decisions. We have a width control that appears on stereo instances of Nectar. We can go above zero and widen the stereo image. We can go down, and when it's all the way at minus 100, we can bring it down to mono. And we can option click this or any of the parameters to snap them back to their default values. And same thing with panning on the stereo instances. We can pan left or right and option click to center it. Next video, we'll dig into the vocal assistant.